Ah, kia ora koutou. Welcome to Papa Kainga or Home Learning TV. My name's Nathan Wallace and I'm going to be your guide over the coming days and weeks around what is the literature and the evidence say is the best way that you can support your children. So we're here to support you to do that. I have a background as a child therapist, a university lecturer and a neuroscience or brain development trainer. So I'm going to be using that knowledge base and in consultation with our experts at the Ministry of Education, we want to put all of the evidence into a nice easy to access package for you to know how to best support your children. The idea is we will focus on parents of younger children on the AM slot and then parents of teenagers and older children in the PM slot. Occasionally the topics lend themselves to being combined but most of the time we'll divide them that way. In my bubble with me, I'm lucky enough to have my youngest daughter, Portiki, Eva, she's 21. And also the reason I can do this is because we already plan to be in the bubble with two of my co-workers, Jess and Jackson. So we're going to be making YouTube clips over the four weeks. Just turns out it's going to be a television uh, show instead. So um, you'll see all three of those people pop in because I have to use extra bodies uh, for the clips. So just so you know who's all here, obviously we're in my lounge. Uh, we've got one camera and one microphone, so we're doing our best to make the quality as clear as possible, but it really is a tua kana tainer situation. You know, tua kana older sibling, tainer younger sibling. We're really just one step ahead of you in this process. Okay, let's launch straight into it. So we want to make this as productive as possible for you, so I encourage you to send your feedback in. I think the easiest way for us to do that is for you to just leave the feedback or any video clips you want to leave on my Facebook page. So the easiest way is to go to nathanwallace.com and that's my web page. Scroll right down and you'll see a Facebook page. Click on there and that'll take you straight to where you can post your comments. We'll answer your questions in upcoming episodes. Kia ora whanau. Oh, and one little more housekeeping thing before we go. I'm learning to speak te reo Māori. So throughout this process, I want to model risk taking and model that learning process by using the reo that I've got. It's just a note to let you know, don't look for an example of excellence in te reo Māori because I speak te reo Māori the same way I speak English, quite a strong southern twang. So for examples of excellence, go to Māori TV. This is an example about learning and putting it into practice. If we have to choose one topic then for parents um, to focus on first, then what is the most important thing we can focus on for our children at this time? And really, if you wanted to put it down to one word, I'd say it's connection. The more connected a child feels, the better their mental health is, basically. Now that can be a challenge in a time when we've lost a lot of our usual connections from leaving the home. So the idea of this section is to give you a summary of the research, some strategies, some tips for what's the most effective way to connect with your child in the most time productive way possible um, during the lockdown. You're going to become quite familiar with this brain model. It's basically a replica of an adult sized brain. When we talk about connection in the brain, basically this brain is as a biological unit, most of what it's here for, and when we look at it and break it into components and work out what those components are for, most of your brain is there for the purpose of having relationships with other brains. So you couldn't get really more fundamental than connection being good for the brain. That's why it's our very first message. We see that in the release of endorphins, just language, communication, interaction, kind of oils up the brain, getting it ready for good mental health. So stay connected whānau, stay talking. Play. That's clearly the best and most efficient way to connect with your child. Now there's lots of different type of play. You might just think about like board games. We call that in the research adult directed play because the adult's in charge. They're saying this is how we're going to play the game, this is the rule that you have to follow. Well the literature supports that because it's still a family interacting and like we've said it's all about interaction. The play that is really supported by literature is what we call free play. Now it might be worth differentiating that from what us adults had when we were children. When we were told to go away and play until the street lights come on, um, that's called free range, right? The literature isn't so much advocating that approach, they're advocating free play, which just means that the child is completely in charge of what the play will be. The adult doesn't direct it at all. In fact, the adult trusts that whatever the child chooses to do is exactly the right thing that child needs to do developmentally for their next stage of development. So we trust the child's choices, we trust the child's play, and the adult's job is simply to scaffold that, to help them, to empower them, to assist them in that play. Now, that can be a bit of a big ask and may need some time to develop, so you might want to start with something like reciprocal play. Reciprocal play is just meaning that you're taking turns. So it's not just you directing, it's not just free play with the child directing, but you're actually co-constructing that and, and building games. It's another great way to play. 
If playing is something that you don't feel super confident with, then uh, maybe just start with what the literature calls parallel talk. You'll think of it as sports commentary. This works especially well with young children when we're just saying to them, and when we're just observing and saying out loud what they're doing. Oh, I can see you found your toy egg. Oh, and you're putting that in your mouth. You know, just describing what the child is doing. That's a way of interacting with the child, being with them, and really takes no skill at all. Just uh, sports commentary. And don't forget the good old quiet play. It's fine to have um, zones in the house and a type of play that is quiet. Sitting and listening to audiobooks or reading a story with your child is another type of play that really enhances your connection. So just play, Fano. Now I'm aware that you're all busy parents trying to work and entertain children during lockdown, so you need a life hack or a cheat sheet way of getting the best possible connection in the shortest possible time. So I want to advocate the best method I know for doing exactly that, and I call it a mate date. A mate date is where you set aside a time, it might only be five minutes for a start, um, say once a week. The importance is that it's predictable. The child needs to know it's going to happen, so they need to know it's Thursday at four o'clock, or they need to know it's today at one o'clock, or if the child's younger, you know, they can't tell time, they need to know it's after lunch, but it just needs to be predictable for the child. Later on we'll talk about how important predictability is to the brain, but for now, just understand half of how a mate date works is because it's predictable to the child. The other half of what makes it work is uh, during a mate date, you're 100% free play. You don't introduce any ideas. You do whatever the child wants you to do. Now, um, that might seem difficult. For a start, the child might not trust that you're actually not going to be controlling and taking over. And so they test you out by maybe doing something like, oh, well, okay, with my 10 minutes mate date, I want to play PlayStation. Now, we don't really want to advocate lots of PlayStation, but the point is it's the child's choice. And I think in that first week, they're sometimes just testing you. So follow what they're going to do. The point is, while you sit there and they spend their 10 minutes playing PlayStation, you don't answer your phone, you don't answer the door, you don't get distracted by anything else. If this is your child's only 10 minutes for the day where they have your full attention and they've chosen PlayStation, then you watch that PlayStation intently for 10 minutes, find out the name of the characters. By the next time you come to a make date session, he's gonna realize you actually did that. You followed through and you spent the whole time following what I was doing. They may test it again the second time as well with another session on PlayStation, but by the third session, your child's behavior starts to change. They start to realize you are actually committed. You're not multitasking, you're not scattered and having your energies drawn in all different directions. You're fully available to the child. And then the play starts to change and they start to have the confidence to lead the play because you're never correcting them. Now you might only be able to do that for five minutes, extend it out to 10 minutes, extend it out to 15 minutes, but it really is the fastest, most efficient way that I've ever found that you can strengthen the connection with your child in a really short space of time. A real key to connect with your children, one is predictability. The brain relies a lot on predictability, so simply letting your child know at one o'clock we're going to play together for an hour. That predictability of knowing at one o'clock mum or dad is going to be available to me um, frees up your time the rest of the time. It also strengthens your connection because you are not trying to multitask and peel the potatoes and do that work report and play with the kids, which doesn't leave them feeling connected. Instead, you are focusing solely on your work, and then at one o'clock, you're solely going to focus on playing with the children. That makes the children feel way more connected. So predictability is a key word. Well, we come to the end quickly. Hope that was helpful. All of these episodes, once they've been aired, will be on my YouTube channel. So just go to YouTube, Nathan Wallace push subscribe and they'll send you a notification every time a new episode goes up and they'll be available there whenever you need them. Okay, we'll see you tomorrow, same time. Kia ora.